Hey guys, it's Agoncio Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually gonna walk you through creating a new effect with the audio data that we created on a previous video. This video, we're gonna be basically creating primitive shapes. In this case, it's gonna be a cube. I'm also gonna be modifying the script to expose a new property that is gonna allow us to create a cube, a capsule, and different primitive types. Then we're gonna be resizing the primitive types and basically changing the scale value based on the data that we're getting from the audio file. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing in this session. And just FYI, this session is a continuation of a previous video. And in the previous video, I walk you through creating basically this project where I created a spectrum manager. And we use that spectrum manager to read the information from the audio source. That information is basically stored in an array. And I'm only using the first index of the array to apply a deformation to these spheres. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I want to make that more dynamic and I want to actually create primitive shapes to that basically are gonna be changing their scale based on the raw data that comes from the audio file. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna start by duplicating shader spectrum underscore two, double click it. And since I'm using post-processing here, I want to make sure that I'm not changing the other scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and select post-process volume, select the profile, and I'm also gonna duplicate that profile. It's gonna be underscore three. We're gonna go back to this and associate it with the new profile. Excellent, so that should all be working. And I'm also going to be removing these spheres here. We're still gonna have the canvas, even though I might not use it in this, but I'm also gonna have a spectrum manager. So let's go ahead and go here, and I'm gonna disable post-processing while, we, while we're working on this, so that I can see everything that is happening. I'm also going to create a new game object, and it's just gonna be an empty game object, and I want that to be a zero, zero, zero. So let's go ahead and focus on that. Let's go ahead and create a new script. So first I'm gonna rename this to be a new name and the new name is gonna be shape create shape manager and once we have that created let's go ahead and create a new script so this is gonna be the script that is responsible for placing the game objects in the screen it's gonna be basically placed in a circular ma manner we're gonna be using a formula to calculate the radius and how basically to place different cubes all around this area so the first thing that I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and create a create shape manager script. Go ahead and click on add and let's let me make sure that I put it in the right place. So let's go ahead and drag it and drop it into scripts. I like to keep them in the script folders. Okay, so that should be good. And perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open VS Code, which is what I'm using for the my code editor. Go into open C sharp project and now that we have that open so we're looking at the spectrum manager and like i said this is from the previous video i'm going to be putting the the link to that video in the description so that you can watch it if you're curious okay now that i have that open let's go ahead and open the new script that we just created and this is where we're going to be focusing most of the attention so the first thing that i'm going to do is i need to store basically all the game objects that we're going to be creating into an array so let's go ahead and create an array. This one is going to be private game object, and this is going to be called game objects. Game objects created. Excellent. So the other thing that I that I'm also going to need is I'm going to need a reference to the spectrum manager because I need to get the values from the sample array that it has, and this is going to be just a spectrum manager. And let's go ahead and initialize it to null. So I'm basically gonna do what we're doing already in the UI manager. So I'm just gonna go into the UI manager and we can just copy a few things. I'm gonna need this. Just double click it to basically to ping it and go back to the create shape manager. I'm going to, what I'm gonna do basically, let's go ahead and make this lowercase, is I'm getting a reference to the, the singleton instance in here because I don't wanna have to do that every time. Excellent, so now that we have that, I'm gonna add a couple of variables. So the first one is gonna be how many shapes I want to place on the screen. So I'm gonna say play objects to be placed. And we can initialize that to maybe 10 
should be fine. And I'm gonna make that one serializable because I want to control that through the through the inspector. Excellent. So these two are gonna be private. We're not gonna be we're basically gonna not gonna be exposing those. The other variable that I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need the radius. The reason why I need the radius is because I want to place this in a circular manner. So you're gonna have basically a circle and, and that circle is gonna have a cube on each piece. So we're basically gonna draw a circle with the cubes. So this is gonna be radius. And we can just set the radius to a number like one should be fine. We'll just do 1.0. And then we're gonna serialize this. Excellent. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and go back to the UI manager and I'll show you what I'm doing in here to get the value. So right now I'm using the spectrum manager that samples and we're only using the first, basically the first item in the array. Well, for this one, I want it to be a little more dynamic. I want it to, if I have 10 shapes that I'm gonna be adding on the screen, I want basically index zero to correspond to the first shape, index one to correspond to the second shape and so on. So this is what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and copy, I'm gonna be copying this line and let's go into here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify the update. So in the update, I'm just gonna basically place that. We're also gonna need the sample multiplier. So on the sample multiplier, and that's basically to scale, to offset some of the values that are coming from the samples because they're too low. And I'm going to place this one right here. Oh, this one is gonna be serializable. So let's place them on the, where we have the values that are exposed. I like to keep them, keep this organized. Okay, we don't need this comment either. We don't need this other comment. Excellent. So, so the first thing that I wanna do is I want to be able to place these objects when, when I'm, basically when I'm starting the scene. So I'm gonna work on, let's work on a new method. So this one's gonna be place objects. And it's just not gonna take any, any parameters. And what we're gonna be doing in here, we're just gonna do a for loop. We're gonna go from the zero, the first item in the, in the array. And we're just gonna do I less than amount objects to be placed actually, which is gonna be our count. And then we're just gonna do I plus plus. I like to use for loops because they're more performant than using a for each. So, so I'm trying to keep it as, you know, as basic as we can. The same thing here with an array. Instead of using a list, I'm using, you know, the primitives. So there we go. This is actually a reference type when, you be, when it becomes an array, but I'm not using a, a list. All right, so now that we have that, I'm gonna be doing some trigonometry here. So we're just gonna do, we're just gonna get the angle. Now in the angle, I need to do, I, I'm gonna grab the value of i and I'm gonna do i plus one. The reason for that is because I don't wanna, I don't wanna have a zero angle. I don't wanna have a cube that is placed in the middle of the screen. So then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply that by math, that pi. We're gonna multiply by two. And then we're gonna divide it by the amount of objects that we're gonna be placing. So now that we now that we have that, what we're gonna do, we're gonna calculate the vector three, new position. So this is what's gonna tell us, okay, where are we gonna be placing those cubes? And we're gonna calculate the position, which we already have it calculated. And we're just gonna say vector three. Now we're just gonna say math that cosine. So we're gonna grab the value of the angle by using by using the value that we just calculated already. So we're just gonna say cos and then our angle. Then we're gonna multiply by the radius. So that's gonna give us our x value. Then for the y value, I wanna keep that one as zero. So it's just gonna be zero. And then to calculate our, our z value, we're gonna use sine. So let's just do math that sine. And we're just gonna get the angle that we calculated, multiply that by the radius. So this should give us the correct position. So we calculated the angle and now we're calculating the new position by using cosine and also sine and we're leaving our, our cube at the y position. Okay, so that's basically the hardest part here. Now that we have that, we can just do game object, geo, and we're gonna use this method that is available as a static method in the game object class. We're just gonna say create primitive 
and we're just gonna tell it create primitive type and we're just gonna say cube excellent and we could extend this we could allow the user to specify what type of shape we want to we want to add we might do that towards the end but for now let's just go ahead and hard code it to be a cube so now that we have that we're gonna have to basically place that game object at the position that we calculated so we're just gonna use game object that transform then we want the position and we're gonna use the new position that we calculated I also want to name these ones correctly so that they, they don't have the word clone and by correctly I mean with a friendly name so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say name of and the name of is gonna be the name of the object that we're creating so I'm gonna say name of and the name of is gonna be this guy and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab I'm just gonna grab the value of, of I and what I'm using here, I'm using a string interpolation. That's why I put the dollar symbol at the beginning, which means that you have to, every variable that you're using has to be surrounded by curly braces. Okay, now that we have that created, now we can basically associate our array. But if you notice, we haven't really created the array. We haven't tell it what size we want. So we need to do that before we associate it. Otherwise, we're gonna get we're gonna get an error. So we need to specify the size. So the size is gonna be game object and then we're going to tell it the size is going to be objects to be placed which is going to be 10 and this is index 0 okay now that we have that set we can say game object game object created and the first object is going to be i and then so on as we loop in through this this for loop and this is going to be basically the hardest part to for us to do the other part is just basically setting the the value that we're getting from the spectrum manager so we need to call this. So to call this, we're gonna have to call it from the start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into Unity. And I wanna see this working. So let's see if this works. We right now have a radius. We have the objects to be placed. Let's go ahead and see. Let's see what happens with this. And there we go. And we're getting, the objects are getting created, but they're just too big. They're just really hard to see as well. So, but we're getting basically we're getting the the objects created as we as we want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the create shape manager and let's go ahead and increase the radius. Let's try a radius maybe of 40, and let's see what happens. And let's go back into the scene and let's go ahead and scroll back and zoom zoom out and we can see that the objects are getting created, but there's not that many. So let's go ahead and bring this down to say something like 30 and let's go ahead and place maybe 40 and hit play. And let's go ahead and okay, so that's looking much better. So what I'm gonna do also is I want to place the camera at the at the right position. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and place the camera in something like around here. And then what I'll do is I'll go to, let's see, let's go to game object, align with view. And the reason why it's not aligning is because I have, I have a simple camera controller associated with it. So I'm just gonna remove that. And I'm gonna try that one more time. So align with view. There we go. So now we should be, we should be good. So we're seeing, we're seeing everything. The camera is, is, is not set up correctly, but we're gonna fix that as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I want to copy my transform on the camera because I need to apply the position that I set. And I'm just gonna say paste component values. And I'm also gonna change the camera to be perspective. There we go. And then what I'll do just for now for debugging, let's just create a new cube. I'm just gonna create a zero, zero, zero. And go into our camera and let's see. I think our camera is just way too far. Let's go ahead and Go ahead and hit play and see what happens with the shapes. Okay, I think, let's see, let's go ahead and adjust. There we go. I'm just gonna adjust the fill of view. Let's do 80 on the fill of view. Let's place everything correctly so that we can we can play with the spectrum manager. Okay, so I think I think I'm good with that. You can in fact go a little bit darker. And what I'm gonna do. Go ahead and get closer. I think we're we're still way too far from the from the cube. Okay, so I think and let me get there we go. I think we can get closer there. 
58 is fine. And what I'll do on the Create Shape Manager, let's go ahead and adjust the radius. So let's do something like 20. And let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, so I'm happy with I'm happy with that view. So nothing is happening, and the goal for this is basically to read the sample data for each, basically for each item in the sample array, and then change the scale of every one of these. So okay, so so far we're good. So far we have what we need. I'm just gonna disable the cube now that we have the camera adjusted, and let's go back into Visual Studio Code. Now what we need to do is we need to work on setting, basically setting the data that we're getting from the audio file. So to do that, I'm going to do a new loop. And in this, this loop is going to be in the update. And I'm going to say, you know, I am going to create a, a variable in the loop, which is going to be called I, just like I did above. And then we're going to do I less than the same thing, objects, basically objects created. So in this one, I say objects to be placed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say objects. Let's see. Let's call the objects game objects created. So just to make sure that we are looping through objects that we actually created. And then we can just do I++. Excellent. So now we have a for loop and we have a value. But we don't have, we're not basically, we're not changing anything just yet. So now what I need to do is I'm going to create a new variable. It's going to be game object. And this is just going to be geo. And we can just grab the item from the game objects array. And we're just going to grab the item that we're looping through. So now we have a reference to that game object. So that, now what I want to do is I want to say geo transform local scale. And I'm just going to say new. And in this one, we're going to say vector3. So remember, all I'm changing here is going to be the y axis on the local scale. So I'm just going to say x is going to be that, 0, and y. So we're going to concentrate on 0 because that's the value that we're going to be scaling. And let me just move this down so you can see better. So now that I have that set, all we really need to do is just grab the value. And we can play with this as we, you know, as we test. So just as a recap, this is what we're doing here. We, we're placing objects on the screen in basically around, around the middle, the middle point. Once we have all those objects placed, which in this case are cubes, we're going to go through each one of those objects and change the y axis value, which is going to be the scale value of y. And change it based on the value that we're getting from the Spectrum Manager samples. So we have one problem here that I just noticed. This needs to be what? This needs to be i, because I don't want to always get the value of the first sample. Otherwise, it's going to be boring. Everything is going to scale the same way. So I'm just going to get the values of the sample of i, meaning that if I have 10 items, this is going to evaluate 10 different samples. OK, so everything I think we have is should be good to go. So let's just fix this space here. Let's go back to Unity and see and see what we're getting now. So if I hit play, and now we're getting some we're getting some changes. Let me let me go ahead and click on mute audio again. But before I do that, let me lower the music because it's gonna be very loud. And that's gonna be in the audio manager. Let me change the audio source. I'm gonna go and change this to be something like very low. Okay, there we go. Let's do, I'll change this at the end so that you don't have this problem. Let's do point 0.2. Okay, so you can see that it's changing, but it's not really changing that much. So what we can do is we can also go to the, let me lower this a little bit more so you can hear me. So I'm going to go to the Create Shape Manager, and we're going to modify the multiplier. Let's go ahead and crank that up. Now you can see that we're getting more changes. And we can do, let's do something like, I think that's too high. Let's do, let's try 2,000. There we go. About 1,000. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out a tiny bit. Let's do 86. So you can see that that's, everything is changing correctly. And we're getting, we're getting some changes. Okay, let me just tweak a few more things. Let's do 700. Okay. 
And this is gonna be just, you know, me tweaking things just to make sure that everything looks right. Okay, so I, I think I'm, okay, 20, 40, and 800 should be good there. And then 86. Okay, let me go back into the Spectrum Manager. Okay, that didn't change. The volume, we set it to 0.2. Okay, so this one we say 1200. And we set the 86 here. And let me go ahead and hit play. Well, before I hit play, let's go ahead and change. Let's see. Let's do, what if we do 50 objects and we do the radius a little bit smaller? Let's try 15. And hit play. Okay, excellent. So that that's still a little too small. Let's do 20. Let's go back to 20. Let's hit play. Okay. Awesome. So, so we're getting some really weird vibrations in there. So what I'm gonna do is in the in the Spectrum Manager, we're gonna add a new feature, and this is something that I just wanna play with and see see what we get. We have a Spectrum Analysis windowing type, and right now I have it set to Blackman. I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna expose that to see what we if we get anything different. If the other evaluators work a little bit different, so I'm just gonna say this is gonna be the FFT window and we're going to basically expose this. We can just say FFT window type and we can set it to you know Blackman which is the one that we that we had by default. And then what I'll do here I'll just set this variable. Okay excellent this is gonna be exposed. So that's one change that I want to make. The the other change that I want to make that I told you about is I want to change this primitive type to be more of a more of a, an option for the user for the creator, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new private. This one is going to be primitive type, and we're going to set it to default default to cube. So I'm just going to say primitive type option, and we can just set it to to be a cube by default, not a capsule a cube. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll use that to set this. Excellent, so I think all of that looks good. Let's just expose it. Excellent. So now, I think everything here is good. I have, let me just make sure. Okay, I have my value here. I think everything looks good. Let me go back into the UI manager. And I think on this one, I use a clamp, basically to clamp the value. And it clamps the given value between a given minimum and, and so, so it was basically a little more smooth and i'm wondering if we should do that but let's try this and see let's try this and see what we get okay so now let's go back into unity and i'm going to be let's enable post processing so that we can start seeing some cool some cool effects okay and right now i don't see i don't see much on the screen but it's fine let's go ahead and hit play okay there we go so now we're starting to see some some post processing I think I'm gonna crank up the the intensity of the bloom. There we go. Let's go ahead and do the 50 there. I think this is this is good. Let's see diffusion. There we go. Diffusion will give it a cool cool look. I think I'm good with that. Then you know if you want to go crazy, you can you can start changing the the lens, and that really gives it a really cool look if you wanted to you know, give a variety of effects. So I'm just gonna set it to something like, let's do, let's do 30, 30 is fine. You can also change the, you know, change some of these colors if you wanted to get a, a different color on the on the shapes. You can see how I can, I can rotate these and get different colors. You could also animate it if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it more of a variety. So there you go. Let's go ahead and undo. I like the color that I had already. Maybe maybe a little bit more red. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. So I think I'm happy with that. Let me let me click on mute because I want to I want I want you to be able to listen to me. Okay, so I think I'm I'm happy with those changes. And let's see, vignetting. Let me make sure. I think vignetting is great as it is. There's really no changes that we need to make. Let's go ahead and do. I don't need I didn't need to change that. And bloom is fine. The 
the color the color grading that I have on the post processing you can change that if you like to so if you wanted to go you know more bright brighter I think I'm gonna leave it as I had it which it, which it was it's 2.8 just to not have too many decimal points okay so I think I, I think I'm happy with that let's go ahead and go back to the spectrum manager and remember that I exposed the FFT window type I want to experiment with let's see rectangular if that changes so you can see that that's changing the way that the 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 values are coming it's like it looks like it's a little bit more rapid and let's go ahead and change it to triangle okay so that let me collapse this okay still going very very fast hamming I like how that one is looking still hanging Okay, I'm, I'm, I think I'm sold with Hanin, because if I go back to Rectangular, I think I like Rectangular, but what I would do on the Rectangular, I would change the multiplier. So it's going to go a little smaller on the multiplier. Let's go ahead and click on the music, because I need to listen to the music to be able to match the... Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and do... Let's do a hand right. Go back to the Spectrum Manager. And try them all one more time with music. This is the kind of face that will fuck your head up. Okay. Now if I go if I do Hammond. Let's do Hannon. Okay, I'm so with Hannon. <laughs> I think that one looks really cool. So we're gonna do Hannon there and then on this guy we'll do a hundred. So I'm just going to hit play and let's go back here and set it to 800 and change the FFT window type to be Hannon. Excellent. So now we, we can hit play one more time and see. Okay, there we go. That's really cool. Okay, let's do let's do one more change. So right now everything is is getting at it and it's getting at it as a root element in the hierarchy i want to basically add it to this object so that if i create another one everything that belongs to that is associated with the one that i create and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say i'm going to change the parent so i'm just going to say game object that parent so it's going to be geo transform parent and the parent is going to be this guy so it's going to be game object and then transform okay let's go back into unity and hit play and see what we get okay so now everything is getting added to this game object awesome so i'm, I'm happy with that excellent so i'm happy with those changes so the the other thing that I want to do is see we have we don't have a prefabs folder yet. Let's go ahead and create one. So I'm just gonna call it prefabs, and I'm gonna start creating prefabs for everything that I'm doing in this scene. For now, we can just do the create shape manager, but I'll go back through and do do some for the spectrum manager. Okay, so I'll do that one, and let's see. You know what? We can we can just do that do it on everything so that we're consistent. And let's go back into the audio source and let's go ahead and change it back to one. And make sure that I apply that to the prefab. And this one is fine. Okay, so I think we're good there. So let's go back to the other scenes. And this one has an spectrum manager as well. And but this one is set to to black man. And so I'll do let's go ahead and remove that and go back into our prefabs and just as associate that guy. And then we can just change this one to black man so that we're so that we have what we had excellent so now let me let me play this scene and let me lower the volume let's do something like that okay hit play let me make sure this one still works okay so this one's working excellent so that's good and on the on the audio source let's bring it back on to one excellent so now let's fix the last scene so on this one I have the same thing, black man, and it's set to one. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove it and then re-add it as, as a prefab. Excellent. And what I'll do, let's just test it. I like to test things before I 
I say that it's done. Otherwise, when you get it, you're gonna get this super loud and incorrect, incorrect project. Okay, so that. Okay, that's good. So this one is good. It has the proper prefab. Let me just change this back to one. Excellent. Let's go back into our new scene and and let's go ahead and hit play. And the reason why I wanted to do this, and this was really loud. And the reason why I wanted to do this as a prefab is because I might want to create other ones. So let's say that I wanted to do one there and let's go back into our scene view. And this is where we are. And what I'll do is I'll create another one and we can just offset that one just a tiny bit. And let's just do, and this one is gonna be two. This one we can just call it underscore one. On two, I'm just gonna add maybe, I don't know, maybe like 20. The radius on this one, we're just gonna say 10. And let's see, let's see what we get if we hit play. I just wanna make sure that I can see it. Okay, excellent. And yeah, it, it looks like it's on the, it's on the middle. Even though, let's see, even though I offset it. Okay, we can offset a little bit more. I think it wasn't enough. What if we put it right over there? And on this one, we can just move this to be maybe 300. So it's not that, that strong. So you can see it right on the back. Let me see if I can, I can move it to a way, to a place where we can actually see it. I think the music is just way too loud. So I think I know why the music, the these shapes are, are just going out of control. It's because the audio source volume was lower before. So if we go back here, and I were to move it down, you can see that the, the data, the volume is also controlling the, the size, which is which is awesome. So what I wanna, but what I wanna do is I want to make sure that I, I account for that. So let's go back here and maybe this one now needs to be lower. Let's do 200. This one, let's do 400. And on the number two, let's go ahead and offset that one. Let's see what we get if we do that. Let's go ahead and hit play. Okay, let's go back. So now, now we're getting, let's do, I actually like, I, I like it to have it in the middle. I think that looks actually really cool. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and remove the offset. So it's gonna do zero, zero, zero. This one we're gonna do, the radius, the radius is gonna be 10. What if we do maybe 14, let's do 14. The multiplier can be, can be much lower, we can do 100. And this one we can do, let's do 300. I think it was just way too strong. So go ahead and hit play. See what we get. There we go. I like I like how that looks. Okay. And if we go back into oh that looks really cool. Okay. Okay, I think I'm, I'm happy with, with the results that we're getting. So you get an idea of what I wanted to accomplish. So one last thing that I wanna do before we, we call it good, let's go ahead and change possibly this one that is on the, on the inside. I'm gonna change the shape here. And we have multiple options. I don't really think doing a playing and changing the Y is gonna make much, much of a difference. I might constrain this and, and, and change the implementation so that we only add things that make sense. So if we do a cylinder, I think a cylinder makes sense in this context. So if I change that, we can see that we're now getting cylinders and I can go back into one and I can also change this one to be a cylinder. And we can see that it's gonna be reflected on the view. So that looks, that's really cool. So that gives it a really cool look too. So what if we want it to be, let's try doing a capsule on number one. And you can see that that looks really, really bad. <laughs> so that's fine. We'll we'll just do we'll just do a cube on number one, and then number two we can do we can probably just leave it as a cylinder. I think that that looks cool. 
Let's go to let's go to number one and add maybe sixty more objects. And let's increment the radius a little bit more. Now that we have two objects, I think if we if we increment the size, okay. I like that. I actually like how the how the cylinders look. So let's go ahead and change them change them all to cylinders. I think that that looks really cool. But I'm still thinking that this is just too strong. Let's do Okay, I think 150 works. Let's do 150 here on the multiplier. And then we'll click on mute audio and then we'll just test it one last time. All right, so I think that gives gives you an idea of what is possible with the with the Unity audio spectrum by reading the information from the from the audio source. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They are my sponsor, and they have amazing resources for game developers of all kinds. Make sure you also check out my Patreon page, where I'm actually raising funds to improve the quality of these videos by getting you know a video editor professional or by getting help from other resources so thank you very much guys